All right. Happy Sunday, everybody. Uh, I am Nick Slavic. I'm the proprietor of the Nick Slavic Painting and Restoration Company. I'm also host of this show, Ask a Painter Live. It's a weekly live Facebook show, TikTok show here, Instagram show there, uh, where I use almost three decades of experience as a master craftsperson and a trades business entrepreneur to basically show you what this life is about, the things that I have done to make my life a little stress-free, uh, more fun, and, and run an effective business. So um, <clears throat> we're going to get into a whole bunch of super fun stuff. We're continuing the series of Mastering the Basics this week. Uh, this week's topic is going to be marketing. Uh, first, I'm going to mention a few things, though. Tons of stuff going on. In a couple of weeks, we're having the Ask a Painter Live uh, Winter Retreat. There's going to be about 18, 20 people coming from across the country, thought experiments, limiting belief testing, all sorts of crazy stuff. We're at capacity now. I'll let you guys know if we have any opening slots, but look for more of those this year. Those things are super fun. We go to a luxury log estate up in the wilderness in Minnesota. We do a bunch of fun stuff together with some of the brightest thinkers in the country. So, all right, uh, let's see. The PCA, Painting Contractors Association. Um, we are having our expo in early March. And if you want to be around four to 500 of the brightest, most aggressive, progressive trades business entrepreneurs and everybody else in your uh, industry, I would tell you, go there. It's, a, it's an investment of both time and money, but anything good is. And uh, if you need more information, there's um, links here. <clears throat> also, if you want this, uh, but in a long uh, full day format in your area, I have master's classes. Uh, I have a full, probably about a five hour marketing master's class. This is a very condensed version where I just skim over the top on a lot of this stuff. If you want me to be in your area, there's a link in the show notes. I can come, we can spend an entire day, we can get underwriters, we'll have lunch together, and I'll present two master's classes to you of your choices. Uh, we get a big group of people together. It's going to be awesome. So um, if you guys want more of that, link's in there. I'm not going to waste any time today. It is family time. It is Sunday. Um, I did have an archery tournament with Gator Boy yesterday, so we postponed the show till today, doing a Sunday experiment to see if we can reach a different audience, more people, things like that. So... Today, uh, by the way, you guys were super nice. I put posts out on Instagram and Facebook asking for mastering the basics, topic suggestions, and really the overwhelming majority was marketing, lead generation, things like that. So um, I condensed. Uh, I gave you some, or I'm going to be showing you some really good data uh, from my company uh, from last year and then some from this year uh, in real time. This is this is my value proposition to you guys. I'm not a consultant. I am not a coach. I am doing this with you. And I want this industry to improve because I've seen uh, how this little freedom machine can change my life. I'm going to give you guys real time information. These are not absolute 100% solve things. All these are kind of in process for me, but I'm here doing it with you and we're going to solve this together. So uh, let's dive right into this. Uh, thank you everybody for watching. Uh, bom dia, all my friends in Brazil. All right, let's share this and let's get going. I'm going to actually show you some really cool stuff from my business today too. So now, <clears throat> remember, everything that I show you is stuff for me, for my business, uh, things that work for me. I'm going, to give, I'm going to give you some pretty good perspective before we start this thing, which is this thing is not the absolute only way, the final answer for getting leads and marketing your business. I'm showing you stuff that I'm doing. You need to adapt this to your company. So let's go. Let me get this. All right. Assumptions and variables. I start every master's class with going through some assumptions, laying out some variables because I want you guys to know what this is all about. This is not me saying, if you're doing something different from me, you're wrong. This is me saying, here's a cool data point for you. Take this and use it to benefit your business. This is just my company. We all have different experiences. We all have different data. There is no bad forms of marketing, just poorly used forms of marketing. So everybody, dogs on Angie, Home Advisor, things like that. Not my preference, but I know people who it works wonderfully for it. And guess what? If you devote intentional time, intentional money, and you're aggressive in your communication, almost every form of marketing will work. You're going to reach different people, which we'll talk about later, but I'll just leave it at that. This is what I do. Um, know your ideal client and location. So this is pretty simple too. Um, honestly, if you look through all of our marketing data, um, most of the people who need our services are 45 to 75-year-old women in the Southwest Metro of Minneapolis and St. Paul. 
that's who comes to us the majority of the time for this. So just know there's because of the sex of people, you don't necessarily have to change a lot of marketing, but maybe location and sex combined, uh, income level, types of houses, professionals, uh, stay at home people, things like that. You've got to know your ideal client and speak to them. Um, don't let perfection stand in the way of really good. I will tell you right now, my process is maybe 60% refined. This is one of my most unrefined sort of processes in my entire company. How to paint a bedroom? Excellent. We got that down. It will take uh, uh, it will take an act of God to change that standard operating procedure because it is so tight. It's been done thousands of times. Now that I'm having more bandwidth to devote to running the business uh, over building this thing over the last five years or so, I can start devoting my time to process um, refinement. And one of the ones is the marketing. But I know a thing in my business is I can spend a bunch of money and get a bunch of leads and we can keep this thing moving. But it's more of just like a it's an unrefined process where I'm just doing it because there's other things that I need to devote my time to. Now, my goal for this year is to cut my cost per lead 25%, which technically could change my marketing budget somewhere between maybe like five and 25% less this year, which is a big thing for me because I'll show you what that number is later. Not all leads are created equal. So one thing I want you to understand is that you hear a lot of people talk about ROI. I got this many people to see it. I got this and that. I'll show you why I don't track or follow or use a lot of those metrics later. One weird data point in my company is that um, I do a lot of flyer marketing and I've also done tons of social media marketing experiments. I can, a true statement is I can spend money for Facebook, Instagram and get a bunch of leads, but they are not as serious on social media as if you do word of mouth, referral, flyer, things like that. So again, when somebody says, hey, I'm getting a whole bunch of these, you know, I got 21 people that requested an estimate. If nobody actually follows up and takes a job, that is a useless form of marketing. And the cost per, per lead is going to be very high. So you have to actually, uh, yeah, we'll get into numbers that I actually care about later on. Now, <clears throat> the basics of um, having a professional business, I would say like an entry feed, even play in this game is you got to have a website, you got to have an email address. You got to be on Google Maps. And there's a bunch of other little stuff like that. But you have to be easy to find. And those are some of the main ways to do it. Oh, also, unsatisfying answer. Just like, what do you charge for a project? Almost all of these questions, what do you charge for X, scheduling, marketing, can all be answered with job costing and simple tracking of a few things. But the problem is successful people usually combine information and grit. The information's all there. Do you have enough grit to actually put it to use and do something with it? All right, where do leads come from? So I divide almost all problem solving things uh, in two ways, which is um, you can solve problems with labor, your effort, or with money or with both. So as we go through this thing, this is not exhaustive, right? Like this is just a, this is just a little bit of a, um, this is just a little bit of a list of uh, high level stuff. Obviously, if we could run businesses off of word of mouth, previous client and referrals, we would do that. Uh, I'll show you data about half of all the finished business, all the projects, all the leads in my company are that, which are the best leads. They are already have this built in layer of trust. They're free and somebody else is doing it for you. The goal would be to do all of this. Also, Dominic Crowley, what's up, brother? Love following you. And thank you for tuning in this morning. Special dude watching it today. So, um, Force multipliers too. So think about builders, realtors, and designers who are out there advocating for you. Um, lead generation sites, Angie, Home Advisor, things like that, paid for leads. Uh, social media, obviously, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, all the all the good stuff like that. Web searches. Uh, so again, if you, Google is the big one there, um, and there's a whole bunch of SEO, AdWords, all that other kind of stuff. Uh, print media, so newspaper, magazines, other things like that. Uh, you'll be surprised. I'll show you an interesting piece of data uh, why I still advertise in newspapers sometimes here. Um, so vans, yard signs, and local presence is a big thing too. Um, uh, mail, flyers, you know, that sort of thing, and email marketing. So process of getting leads. Um, interesting data point about my company. We don't have a phone number that people can call, and this surprises a lot of people. Uh, I did this for a couple of reasons. Number one, um, the main reason, well, listen, people think it's impersonal. But we actually get some complaints every once in a while when we ask people what we could have done better on their jobs. They'll say, would have been nice to have a phone number. What those people aren't understanding is that you did. You had six phone numbers. Once you accepted a project and you're in our company, then you have an amazing support team, an unrivaled support team. But 
back in the day when I did not have enough time because I was doing all the estimating, uh, painting during the day and other things, I could not take phone calls during the day. Data point one. Data point two is I'm not a compliance guy. The biggest problem I had when people would call me is I'd be writing down their name, their address, phone number, email address. And guess what? Nearly every single one I got wrong. It's just something about me. Know thyself. I can't write. If you gave me 100 email addresses to write down, 75 of them would be correct. 25 wouldn't be. And then it's a disaster. Then you got to call them again. Then you got to test the email. Then you got to do this. It was such a clunky system. I know myself. I know how my brain works. I funnel everybody to my website initially. Once they're into my website, then they have all of our contact numbers and everything else. So what you're seeing here is a screenshot of my website. And I try to make things very easy for them, which is you see the big red thing that says free quote, paint my walls, paint my trim and cabinets. I'm trying to skew people for certain projects. Uh, when people are like, hey, I'd really like to have my cabinets painted. Oh, my God, paint my cabinets or my trim right there. You got to make it easy for people like this. So one of the things I'm going to show you here is I'm going to take you through. I'm going to hide this one and I'm going to actually show you how you go through my, I'm going to go through uh, my website here and I'm going to actually show you how to do this, how easy it is. So if I'm here and I want my walls painted, so if I were a potential client, I would come to paint my walls and then you can see next screen shows up and then there's a form to fill out. And the cool thing about this is autofill. So when people, when people show up here, uh, if they've done this before, they'll autofill. Now, the two things that you got to be very careful about collecting is this. They cannot submit this unless they tell me where they heard about me. So again, these are our major forms of marketing. This is one of the most important things about marketing is tracking where your leads come from. You have to force people to do this. They will not offer it up. 10 to 20% are probably not accurate either. You have to understand that. So we'll say vans and then description of project, paint my cabinets. All right, I am not a robot. I, in fact, own this website, and then I submit. All right, and then what happens? You get a you get an email. So uh, in my email box, it'll give you a confirmation right here. It'll give you a, a, um, a confirmation there. One other thing I want to show you guys, which is really cool, is I'm going to hide this, and I have a spreadsheet. Every time somebody goes to my website and types in a lead, it zaps it, Zapier, into a spreadsheet. And this is how I start tracking leads, make it easy. So if you guys can see this, I highlighted this one line down here. And if you look at it very closely, it says Nick Slavic instantly. And it says D -d 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 -d, time, date, my email address, phone number, vans, Here's my project. So again, it's compiling data. And now the cool thing about this spreadsheet is that you can sort the columns by, okay, show me all the leads from one week or show me all the leads from word of mouth, uh, things like that. Uh, show me location uh, and, and that sort of thing. So again, trying to make it easy and all the data I'm going to show you later. Um, is there any way to see what you're looking at? You have to go to Facebook to see my screen share here. I cannot share a screen share on Instagram or on TikTok. So uh, Ask a Painter Live on Facebook has this stream going right now. It'll be archived there, archived on YouTube as well. So all the data I'm going to show you later is basically started out as this data, this, this large amount of data. And I use spreadsheets as my database. And I'm willing to work with it like that because I haven't found anything that does it exactly uh, uh, for me. So we're getting there, though. Oh, Quentin, how's it going, man? One of my fine crafts people watching today. So, okay, let's go back to, all right. Sorry, I gotta get make sure I got the right screen share in there. Nope, get out of there, get out of there. Okay, so cost of marketing and benchmarks. So one of the coolest numbers that I was introduced to years ago is larger companies, uh, typically uh, over a million uh, plus, uh, kind of like circle around this number of like 3.5% of revenue as a marketing budget. So if, you, if you're if you a million dollar company, if you produce a million dollars of painting uh, business a year, $35,000 on average is a good place to start with your marketing. Now, I've also heard things from zero to 10%, 20%, which is an enormous amount of marketing. Uh, a lot of people who are, uh, some, some companies love marketing. They truly just love marketing. It's fun. Some some uh, operators, uh, some owners of these companies are really love that game of pulling levers, using money and stuff. And some of them, uh, 
if I'm being honest, overspend quite a bit. If you're in the 10%, that's a really expensive form of marketing. Uh, so uh, 3.5% of revenue, obviously you want that as low as possible. Um, give or take $150 a lead, uh, which sounds like a lot, right? It sounds like a lot of money, but in in the uh, span of running a business for the year, uh, you know, you can get a lot of leads for $35,000 based on that. Now, the other sort of soft metrics uh, that you can use to see if marketing is effective is, is your schedule full? <laughs> and are jobs in your confidence? And we got Sig barking at bird. Sig, hey, you all right, buddy? All right, so there's a bunch of birds out on the bird feeder and Sig is barking at them, so. All right, um, Sig, come on, bud. It's good. Stay with me, bud. All right, good boy. All right. Let's go back to my screen. Okay, analyzing effectiveness of marketing. So here's one thing that is not that interesting to me that I hear everybody talk about, which is traditional ROI. I got an 18 to one ROI. Say that, okay, good start. That number does exist in my company, but what I'm more interested in is cost per lead and cost per completed project, because that is a tangible number, something comparable uh, to other things. The problem with ROI is like this you can lull yourself and fool yourself into thinking that it's a way better number than it is. So think about, hey, I paid $1,000 on Facebook for marketing and I got a $2,000 project out of it. I just doubled my investment. No, another way another way to think about that is that job cost you $1,000. So on a $1,000 or on a $2,000 project, half of the money that you're going to make on that was devoted just to getting it, which is super expensive. So what, think about this. If your marketing budget is 3.5% of your revenue, which means if a $2,000 job, if you stick to your 3.5% of marketing, that lead probably should have cost you $70, give or take, uh, based on the amount of revenue on that job. One thing I'm not interested in is reach, views, and impressions. You get people all the time on, on the painter internets, the Facebook saying, oh my God, I reached 41,000 people. It's like, okay, what did it cost you and how many completed jobs came out of it? I don't even care about estimates a lot of the times. Estimates and leads, uh, leads are one thing, estimates are the next thing, and completed accepted estimates are the third thing. I'm interested in those three numbers and seeing how they react. What's the conversion rate from somebody who is just a lead who goes to the website versus requ uh, requesting an estimate versus accepting an estimate and then getting it produced? Those are the more interesting numbers to me. So when somebody says I reach 40,000 people for $20 on Facebook, I'll say, you may just wasted that $20. Did anybody ask for an estimate? And out of the people who ask for estimates, did anybody actually ask you to paint their house? So. Um, what I'm interested in is cost per lead, cost per completed project. So if you ever want to compare numbers with me, if you have questions about this stuff, that's the number that I'm going to start talking about. Because all this other stuff, 18 to 1 ROI, uh, I reach 40,000 people, that could either be insanely effective or a complete waste of money. You need to drill a little bit deeper on that stuff. What data to track? I just showed you this estimate or this, uh, this spreadsheet form on here. In real time, you saw my name come up on there. I love this in aggregate like this. So obviously we're going the date and the time, uh, we're going name, we're going email, we're going phone number, we're going address, city, state, zip, all that other stuff. Um, we're going uh, where they heard about me, the yellow column you can see right there. And then the pink column, they actually have to describe their project because we really don't pre-qualify uh, in the way that most people do. Um, we love helping people with estimates. We're not trying to talk people out of estimates or seeing, not seeing if they're good fit. But also if somebody says, build me a deck, we don't build you a deck. We will stay in a deck, but we won't build it. And I want to see a little bit of that information right away so we don't waste people's time. So having that track. Now, if you are a single person company and you only do 50 jobs a year and you're only doing 100 estimates a year, this is easy. You can almost track that on a legal pad. The problem is you want to be able to search it and query it. Uh, if you start looking for the, the keyword deck or exterior in there, you might see that there's an inordinate amount of people that are looking for that or not enough, you know. Job costing. Job costing rears its head again. So uh, the first big uh, Mastering the Basics show of this year was job costing for a reason. You guys are seeing how all this stuff ties together. Tracking simple amounts of data. And then this data sort of touches each other and, and amplifies and weaponizes the other data in your company. And you can really get some cool things out of it. So what you're seeing here is one quarter worth of job costing. There's about, well, there's 100, 144 jobs 
that we did in that quarter there, 121 of them, you can see my conditional formatting, the green and red. Uh, we track revenue per hour, gross profit, material, and labor. When something is green, obviously it's good. When something is red, it does not meet our standards. And where we can look at this, there's 144 lines of data for this one quarter. 121 jobs met our standards. So that's about 84% of all projects we did there met our gross profit standards. 23 projects or 16% did not. Now I removed some data from the personnel in the company because it's based on, this is actually what I, uh, what I do to uh, calculate bonuses and stuff too, but you can actually track it then by, okay, we got two project managers. Which one produced more? Were their projects more profitable? Did materials go over? You can start parsing out this data, but you combine this data with your leads. So out of those 144 projects, we can go back to this spreadsheet and we can say, okay, out of all these leads that came through, how many turned into estimates, which we have Andy's sales tracker and my sales tracker. And then we have this job costing. So you can see the levels of data that we're looking for. How many people are leads that ask for an estimate? How many people get an estimate? How many people accept it? And we have those three spreadsheets together that we can query. Marketing cost and distribution. So this is actually for week one, two, and three of this year. These are all zip codes. Uh, these are how many households. These are uh, postal mailing routes, cost per household, and then cost per printing. And I have all these aggregated. So you can see when we look at this spreadsheet here, we, we, divide, we divide this number by weeks. And you can see, you can go to week one in January, let's say we got 47 leads that week. And then you can go to this one and say, okay, week one in January, we spent $4,600 in marketing, give or take. Uh, and then we can start doing our lead calculation. You know what I mean? How many households did we touch? What was the cost per lead? Now, the interesting thing is I should tell you guys at this point is these numbers are high, right? This, this seems like a, an insane amount of money. What you need to know about our company is that there is a demand curve in the painting industry. The peak where my tips and my fingers are is summer. <laughs> and the, the, my wrists down here, the troughs are in winter. What I wanna do is this. I don't want too much demand in summer and not enough in winter. We take literally almost our entire marketing budget and expend it in the six months of winter in Minnesota to take this demand curve and level it out like that. Um, if we do nothing, if we do not market at all, we will run out of work in winter. Half of our leads come from word of mouth referral and past clients. That's not enough to keep 35 people in this company busy. So that's why we need to pay for leads. Again, effort and money. We're using our money to even out that demand curve. Now, what we do also, uh, I actually just made a huge change to our drywall marketing because we're being overwhelmed by drywall leads. And so much so that it's monopolizing our estimators uh, estimating calendar. So we actually have to take our, our drywall leads down. So I changed the marketing. I also halved all the spending, but we knew this because this is an excerpt from uh, one of my weekly leadership team meetings. You're actually seeing real-time data where I look at my leadership team and I lead this meeting and all these numbers have to be presented to the company for the good of everybody. So we can see, you know, we, it's a pulse of the company weekly. We start off with our job costing. We review every job. We go over our weekly goal tracker, which is a job costing of all the projects we did in aggregate. We go over our schedule, weekly production plan. So we're looking at our, pro, our, our production team and saying, what are you guys planning on doing next week? What, what level of revenue is it? So we can kind of get a feel of what kind of projects are coming. Uh, then we go through lead times. We actually get a lead time update based on all the schedule on every type of job, drywall walls, cabinets, trim, exteriors, decks, carpentry, things like that. Uh, when will we experience a work interruption? How much is sold interior versus exterior? Um, sold last week. Uh, <laughs> this is kind of a cool number. Um, Andy and I had a bang up week last week. We sold almost $160,000 worth of paint work. Um, uh, we have a, a huge estimate lead time, uh, but we actually just have uh, Ian, our new estimator, starting last week, so that'll help with that. But here's the part in red where I want to show you guys, which is I get the pulse. I see every lead that comes through the company, and our coordinator reports in it. We had 70 leads uh, that week come through, which is, I think, an all-time high for us, which is pretty amazing. Um, people get back to work in the third, fourth, fourth week of January, and uh, they start asking for painting. And you can see we track them. Of those, we have 46 estimates scheduled from that. Five no response, or five did not need an estimate because, again, a lot of painters get a hold of me through that uh, instead of emailing me. So there's some in there. And then no response. So no response is good and bad. Uh, well, I shouldn't say good and bad. It can be deceivingly bad, which is, oh my God, 19 of those people ghosted us. 
at the time of this reporting, a lot of the times people have not formally gotten their estimate on the calendar yet. So that's kind of a no response sort of thing. So, yeah. And then you can see we worked 900 labor hours last week. Uh, we did some reviews. We did some net promoter score and things like that. But getting that weekly pulse uh, is very important to a company like this. So we track sales too. So this is the 2021 uh, sales tracker uh, for me and Andy. You can see our numbers posted here. Uh, we track weekly. And then again, you can see our conditional formatting. Did we meet our goal? Did we not meet our goal? What is our what is our monetary goal? Uh, all that other stuff. So again, combining these things and seeing trends is a very big thing. Now, <clears throat> sniff test on 2021. I'm going through doing a complete urine review uh, on my company right now. And I, I condensed it down because we have a whole bunch of crazy data coming through with that. And I use it uh, to make decisions based on or for marketing next year. But here's basically what I want to walk you through. This is real time data I can show you on how I market, what's effective, what's good, what's not good, give or take. So what you can see is uh, on top of this thing, and then we'll get to some questions here shortly. I thank you guys for doing this here. Uh, da, 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 da. Oh, Estimator Ian's watching as well too. All right. Okay, guys, I see all the questions coming through. Hold tight. I'm going to give you this data. This will probably generate some more questions and then we'll get after it here. So, okay. On the top, the gray and white and black thing you're seeing, um, I have uh, two big black boxes around that stuff. Um, basically, what you see the top one, that one that says 48.6%, those are all basically leads that I did not pay for that just generate themselves. So we have word of mouth, previous client, Facebook, Instagram, things like that. We don't really do a lot of paid um, marketing through Facebook and Instagram. Every time I do, I can make leads show up. They're not very serious leads. So I just don't do that. I go to other sources. 51.4% of all my leads were paid for. And you can see newspaper, web search, fans, yard signs, and flyers, give or take. So um, what's really important here is that, yes, newspaper is confusing, right? Um, I pay maybe 300 bucks a month to have a, an ad in our local newspaper. Um, the very high age demographic that calls on me, it's still a great uh, way to get a hold of them. Also, uh, I think of it as almost this weird little history project where for time and eternal, there will be some record of my company with an ad in that newspaper. They archive all this stuff. So I think it's actually kind of cool. It maintains a local present. It does have some gravitas in my local area here. It's not the big Minneapolis, St. Paul thing. It's more of a very hyper local sort of my hometown sort of thing. And uh, yeah, it's more of just supporting that and, and that sort of thing. So I spent about 3,600 bucks last year on that. We got 57 leads from newspaper. Uh, we got 116 leads from web search. We actually don't pay that much money on Google AdWords. Again, I've done a whole bunch of experiments. And when a marketer says to you, yes, Nick, you got to pay an insane amount of money and it'll take three years to get any result. That's not that interesting to me because there's other things that I can do right now. You need to show me an, an immediate return on my investment. Uh, vans, we actually got 62 people that saw our vans and called us. We have 49 people that saw our yard signs. Uh, and again, the biggest one, um, 33% of all of our leads came from flyers. Now, you can see the prices on those things. Uh, we hit about maybe 150,000 homes last year. Uh, the percentage of costs, it's 86% of my marketing costs for 50% of the leads, but it works very well. It costs about 57 cents per house. Our cost per lead is high, which uh, again, my goal is come, uh, to bring that down. It's about $168 per lead on that stuff. Uh, yeah, we spent about $85,000 on that total marketing spend just under $100,000 last year. We got 1,546 leads uh, through the business last year, give or take. Now you can start looking at some pretty cool data uh, down below here. Uh, we did about 2.1 million in revenue with another 100 grand uh, in, uh, in accounts receivable produced. So really we did about 2.2 million last year. We did 462 projects. You can see how it breaks down over quarter. Our average job size was about $4,500 give or take. But that helps us understand like when you combine all this data, what is the cost per lead? What is the cost per estimate? And what is the cost per completed job? So perspective and advice, and then we're going to get to a whole bunch of questions here. So number one, fine, right? You've seen some data from my company. Nick does it this way, so I must do it that way. Don't do that. Do some experiments, but you've got to be good at it. The baseline is job costing. The baseline is tracking the cost, the source, and the outcome. You can see my experiments like this. Uh, a brief rundown of my experiments are social media. You can get a lot of leads. They're not that serious. Google AdWords. At one point, I was paying $1,000 per every job completed 
that came through Google AdWords. And it was not ramping up. It was not going down. So I, I stopped that. Now, I do do minimum Google AdWords. I talk to my web guy and I say, listen, 500 bucks a month, give or take, just do whatever you can with that or do something effective with it. You got to do something in there, but I'm just not going all in on Google AdWords. I want that stuff to work. If I'm being honest with you guys, I do not want flyers to work. It is gross. We're printing paper. It's basically just sending mail to people. The problem is you could consider it junk mail. Absolutely. The problem is it's effective. It works really, really well. We get tons of compliments on our actual uh, flyers like this. This is an actual flyer. I also send, send one to myself to see the distribution. But basically, it's just appealing to a certain demographic. We know how to do that. And honestly, it works. I do not want it to work. I want Instagram or TikTok or Facebook or Google AdWords to work. The problem is it doesn't right now. And so we're doing something else. Now, what you also need to know about my experiments is we're going to be shifting uh, using more effort instead of money. Money allowed using money to solve the marketing thing over the last five years has given me the opportunity to put my effort into something else in the business to solve problems. Now that my bandwidth is getting cleared up, we have a world-class estimating team, world-class production team, world-class craftspeople out there. Now I have time to circle back and say, okay, now we can start getting into more relationships with builders and designers and realtors we like. We can do some more email marketing, which again is probably a little more effort than money. There's a little bit of money involved. Um, and there's just a whole bunch of that relationship building, working on past clients, things like that, uh, where we can devote our sales team effort instead of our money to do that stuff. So I wanna bring our, our cost of leads down at least 25% this year. That's a personal goal of mine. And again, labor versus money. Now, don't forget about the intangibles though. Like people always say, uh, right now, this is a tough time for painters out there. It's the middle of winter in most of the upper Northwest or an upper uh, Northern part of the United States. I see every other question on the painting forums is how do you get more work? How do you get more work? Here's the thing folks, I'll tell you exactly what I did. I actually went out on my own in 2007 and competed against my own family business in our town. My family business had been around for 20, 30 years at that point, known name. I put my shingle out, competed against it. I relied on all of the relationships I've built my entire life. I'm super involved in community groups, veterans groups, uh, economic development authority, uh, tons of other stuff like that, uh, history groups, all that other sort of thing. I'm around town. I, I have a, a stable base of relationships in this town and that is legitimately what helped out so when people say how do you how do you get leads early on and they immediately go to angie's list home advisor fine that works too but honestly you having a presence in your community and being known as a trusted person that is key to building that 50 percent of all the g i mean we did you know 462 500 jobs last year 250 of those came with no money people that know and trust us and have us do painting work for them that is a huge thing. In order to have that, in order to do 250 jobs that you don't pay for based on a, a, a base of trust, that takes tons of intentional effort in order to do that. Don't forget about relationships. Don't forget about community involvement. Don't forget about reputation. Every job is, is, a base, is basically an advertisement for your next one. You have to be easy to find people. Legitimately, one of the best ways of getting work in the middle of winter when you're not, when the leads aren't coming in strong, you go door to door and you drop off flyers. Some municipalities, you got to actually register as a solicitor. You can't just do that. It's illegal. You pay a $10 fee and you go do it. Posting three to six times a day on social media is a wonderful thing. Going on those community boards, uh, New Prague Happenings. Every town has a happenings sort of Facebook group and people are looking for painters. You can even post your services there. Say, hey, I got a couple weeks free here, you know. I'm willing to do some painting for somebody, let me know. You gotta be easy to find people. Google Maps, website, Facebook, Instagram, maybe TikTok yet. I would, I would, I would not use that as a main form of advertising for your business. You gotta be easy to find though. You can use tons of effort instead of money early on to get these leads. For God's sakes, if you are one job away from going bankrupt or not feeding your family, call every single person you know and ask them to work for them. How bad do you want it? Do you have the grit, give or take? All right, let's get back to the main page here. All right, I'm gonna start going through some, some questions. Oh man, thank you guys for watching. Lots of people here. So thank you for taking uh, family time uh, to spend it with me. Dustin Hutchinson, how's it going? Jimmy Coleman, how's it going? Uh, Wilson Barrera, Bumgia, it's morning, yes. Um, Jose 
Andrade, good morning, my friend in Brazil. All right, Anthony Cade, Facebook is number one for him. Yes, Anthony does a very good job uh, marketing on social media. Uh, and if you want more data on that, I, I personally do not. I've, I've not got the return. People think that I must have this easy way of getting all the jobs we want because I'm a loudmouth on social media. Don't ever forget that this is for you guys, painting contractors. This is not This is not typically, it, it, I mean, listen, I would love this to be a, a place where I interact with all my clients. The problem is this is super nerdy stuff for business owners and, and master crafts people. So, all right, Anthony Cade, believe it or not, we spend zero on advertising. Advertising for us is staying top of mind. We show our work and that's it, no asking for work. It's a long haul game, but it works for us. Of course, there are four person companies, so I'm sure this may flip as I continue to grow. Interesting data point, I'm glad you bring that up, Anthony, was, I was able to support about four or five painters before I needed to spend money to actively get uh, more leads, give or take. We ran about a half million dollar company before I actually needed to say, okay, we are getting a little light in winter. Let's get out there and do some stuff here. All right. Ian Serp, my new estimator. Love that guy. <laughs> Thanks a lot, man. We'll see you Monday. We're going to have a big week here. So uh, Chad Devereaux had a record week also. It's almost like the switch. Uh, the good part about having tons of data is that uh, I brief my entire team and typically the third week of January, people have to return to normal life and the work is uncorked. You'll see monstrous amount of leads come through. So Chad, we're in the same kind of geographical area. Uh, every year it, it is that way. Every year it is that way. Uh, no. All right. Brian Chemnitz, do you track average hours work per painter? Yes. 900 hours last week, 35 painters is only 25 hours a week. That's a lot of hours left on the table. Yes, Brian, but you have to understand not everybody is a uh, in our organization as a painter. There's a leadership team in that as well. Um, I can actually show you. Let's see if I can bring up. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yes. So yeah, a lot of the times when you guys are doing sniff tests on my numbers, you also have to say, listen, some of the numbers are not as simple as that sort of thing. So what I will do is bring up, let me do a quick screen share for you guys here. Do, 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 do. Give me just a second. I'm looking for my dashboard. Okay. I'm going to get in here and I'll show you guys our weekly goal tracker because that's where we actually uh, look at some of this stuff. So I am going to screen share. Give me 30 seconds. And I will bring up that Chrome tab, dashboard, share. Okay. Let me make sure I have it up for you guys. All right. So um, we track uh, actual revenue per hour, uh, all, all sorts of crazy stuff, because uh, one of the things that my people have to do uh, as well is there's a whole bunch of, and sorry, this is a big spreadsheet. It's still kind of loading here. All right, here we go. Um, one of the things that we rate our painters on is production. So we have our goal tracker by weeks down here. Let's get into week five. Let me make sure this is coming through. All right, coming through. So let's go back to this. Let's go back to week four. I think that's the last completed week we did. And you can actually see here, and we produced about 47K last week. And right here, you can see the name and everybody here. Uh, these are the actual hours worked every week. So, yeah. And we do, that's a, that's a weekly job costing right there. So, hope that answers your question, Brian. Jesse Allen, good morning, Nick. We have always done some church work in the winters to keep us busy, typically at cost for a certain amount of work. They're happy to get their parishes done and discount generates tons of leads. Yeah, agreed. Uh, interestingly enough, uh, we normally do that in, in um, December as well, too. So uh, Leonardo Silverio, TikTok for branding. Yes, but you also have to consider um, Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok have all like, there's generational creep, right? Facebook initially was pictures of your food and cat pictures, and nobody understood it. It was, it was the young folks. And then people a little older, and now all grandparents use Facebook. Instagram was then that next thing of food and cat pictures, but now you can see grandparents. Our clients are on Instagram, a lot of stuff. TikTok will go that way too when the next social media platforms. This is not rocket scientists. It's just how this stuff works. So, all right. What's your system for reaching out to past clients? Rick Sabatini. Uh, so in the past, we used to send thank you cards to everybody. Uh, we have been very unintentional about this. Uh, because a lot of our work is naturally generated from that. Uh, Rick, that is one thing that we're actually going to get super intentional in the next 12 months about is uh, talking to our previous people that already know and love us. So, 
All right, Nick, what, what is your marketing percentage of revenue? So mine was a little high this year. Uh, I think we're at about five, five and a half percent this year. My goal is three and a half percent on average. And I would like to creep that down a little lower too. So Austin Schumacher, being customer driven has been our biggest ROI. Word of mouth about the quality has given us so much business. Agreed. And the one thing you guys should all know, one, one, two, three, maybe even four person company, you really shouldn't even need to do any paid marketing, give or take. You, If you answer your phone and you do decent amount of work, you will be flooded with stuff. So if you're a single person company, you may have to get a little active with your labor in winter to fill the schedule, but you shouldn't be spending $1,000 a week in advertising. That should naturally be generated for you just by doing the things you need to do to run a business. So. Leonardo, what do you use to automate all this data? Uh, so it's not really automated. I automate it all. Uh, Zapier is about the only thing I use, and I go easy on that stuff. There is one Zapier that takes a website lead and puts it into my spreadsheet, and then I deal with it after that. I manipulate those spreadsheets and search in order to do what I need to. So, all right, Harvey Follis, do you include a certain amount for trade shows? I do not do trade shows. That is not my personality. Uh, I am introverted and fairly passive aggressive. Standing there and greeting people and trying to get uh, their information for an estimate is not something that I'm interested in. Just my personality. Rick Sabatini, you're welcome. All right, so let's go to Instagram. Make sure I didn't pass over everything. Thank you, everybody, for watching. This is super fun to do. <laughs> Dominic, love following Dominic. Okay, people. Awesome. All right. Thank you guys for doing this. Um, I do appreciate all this. Oh, uh, last question. Dan Zapanzik, what's the hardest transition point in getting leads marketing growing from 1.5 to 2? Um, what's the hardest transition point in getting leads marketing? <sighs> so the biggest thing for me was like a series of questions, which is, can we even have enough work to support this company in winter? And yes, we found out that we could. And now it's this process of refinement. So Dan, I might need a little more information on your, um, on that question. But for me, by the time we hit 1.5, we already kind of knew that, you know, Facebook wasn't going to drive hundred percent of our work. We were already dabbling in flyers. It showed a lot of promise. So now we're refining that process over and over and over again. So um, this year we're really dialing into, Hey, if we spend this much and we touch this many houses, this many leads are going to come in. So now it's a lever where we can pull down hard on it. We can release on it, things like that. Um, but just getting that baseline data is a big thing. And I'm always of the, of the, so for the last five years in the winter, I've always worried about not having enough work. One of my rocks, one of my goals is to not let this company run out of work. The problem is for the last five or six years, this company has been different and bigger every single year than the year previous. So it's always been a new version of this company that I've had to deal with. So I've always, uh, overspent in marketing to ensure that we have enough work coming through all the time. So, and then getting that data and then refining it like that. So, um, Brian, average hours per painter is something I haven't tracked until recently. And wow, did I find an opportunity? Uh, we definitely leave hours on the table. I'm trying to fix this ASAP. What things do you have to drive this number up? Uh, well, Brian, uh, you pay for payroll. So that, I mean, it should be automatically calculated for you anyway. Um, one of the things that we incentivized to get that number up, Brian, we actually suffered in the year of COVID 2020, people kind of got used to working 32 hours a week. And that's not how this company runs. If they want the benefits of this company, if you sign up for a full-time job, you need to work full-time hours. I mean, that's just the uh, employment agreement that we have. If you want health insurance, you need to be a full-time employee of this company. So the standards, I think it was two shows ago, I did mastering the basics on standards and deliverables. In order for you to keep your job in my company, you must average 40 hours a week for 50 weeks a year, 2000 hours. If you're not, you're not eligible for a raise. So Brian, that's the thing right there. If you are, if you want to talk about a raise, you need to put in a minimum of 40 hours a week, give or take 50 weeks a year. That's just how it is. You can put in overtime, you can take time off, you can backpack through Israel, but you got to be here for a full-time job. So holding people accountable, Brian, is the big thing. Uh, Dustin Hutchinson, uh, email marketing allows direct video messaging. Thomas Powell, uh, if I reviewed your programming in previous emails multiple times, what can I do to show appreciation when asking for more documents in the future? <laughs> no, I appreciate that. So honestly, the one thing that almost nobody does that would help this the most is like and follow Ask a Painter and share this show. There are, mm, let's see, there's about between TikTok, Instagram, and here, there's about 80 or 90 people watching right now live. If every single person just hit the share button, we could reach more people like us, which would give more interaction, which then would spread this word, 
get these documents out there and allow this industry to change. So honestly, if everybody, every time they watch Ask a Painter, hit the share button and just shared it to their page, we would have infinite growth of this thing. And I would be much appreciated. So also uh, get, a, get a master's class in your area. One of the most rewarding things I do is take all this information in a whole day format and come to you and we do this in real time. And instead of me just showing you the things like this, we go for four or five hours and then we ask, ask and answer real time questions and we talk about your specific business in a group of our peers. So having a master's class in your area would mean a great deal to me because it's one of the things I love doing the most is helping people in groups of 10 to 50, give or take. So. All right, uh, Brock Solid. Hey, how's it going? Uh, we've uh, hey Nick, we've been trying to gain new clients. Do you have any tips for portraying yourself as a trusted company? Yeah, it's a thousand little things, and it's not easy. So again, our we are a cream, tan, and brown company. So everything we do, collared shirts, vests, hats, all our logos are the same. Our website looks like our stuff. Our Instagram, our Facebook looks like our stuff. The best thing you can do is look the part and be the part. So. Vans, website, marketing, people, messaging, what you promise, what you deliver, all has to be same. So it doesn't freak people out. But then doing good jobs also adds to that too. And so my company's been around for 14 years. I can guarantee you a large reason why half of our jobs come from repeat, previous clients, word of mouth referrals, things like that, is because we do take care of our clients in a very special way. So yeah, that's basically it. Uh, let's see here. Brian Kem, you guys are asking really good questions. I'm gonna hang out for a little bit. It's interesting, yes, employees are part of the issue, but uh, when they finish a job early, we have to have them on the next job ready for them. Our reaction time is more the problem. Oh, there you go, interesting. So sounds like you guys need to up your game to uh, schedule a little better for your people. Um, yeah, so uh, we are very fortunate to have this production team that does not like any wasted time at all during the day. So they always have a queue of jobs uh, in there ready to go, uh, which is a good thing. And they, they work on it a lot. Uh, okay, folks, that's about it for me. I appreciate you guys all watching. Uh, it's been a fun show. Uh, I am happy to help in any way I can via email, nick at nickslavic.com. If there's some way I can add value to you and your company, I will try in my free time. Otherwise, it's Sunday. And uh, yeah, we'll talk to you guys later. It's been a fun show. <laughs>